Good? We're on there. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I am here with Kaylee. And we are, well, you guys know her. She's been all over Instagram. Um, she's modeled for me a bunch of times. Uh, I love it when she's here. I am actually really excited for today. We're gonna be doing some um, looks on her later, like extending her length, all of that stuff. So uh, we're gonna get right to it today because we have a lot we wanna get through today. And we are gonna be talking about one of my um, favorite subjects to talk about, which is business, specifically with the social media aspect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, begin curling her hair. And it's just gonna be a salon curl, like if she was sitting in my chair, this is what I would do in the salon. So to prep her hair, if she was in the salon, my go-to products for uh, salon curls would be, I would start with uh, expand a volume all over her roots on wet hair. This is gonna, like the expand a volume helps to like um, lift the hair right off of the scalp. So it gives lots of volume at the top, which I love. And then I'm gonna go through with the blow and set. This is one of my favorite products. Um, it actually comes out almost like water, but it smells delicious. It's totally uh, weightless on her hair, and it not only is like a heat protectant, but it also helps with um, curl retention. So on your clients that have hair that maybe doesn't hold a curl as well, this is my go-to product for that. And then um, I would either spray Boost to Spray, mist it all over, or because I typically work with an assistant, they will spray the Boost to Spray for me as I go. So we're gonna pretend that I prepped her hair with all of that. But like I said, these are my favorite salon products. So as I'm talking, if anybody has questions about anything that I'm going over, please chime in. Otherwise, I am just going to keep blabbing on like we know I love to do. But um, I'm happy to answer any questions about these and why I choose them. But these are my go-to for salon curls. So because we're gonna be talking a lot about social media and business, I'm just gonna give you the game plan for her curl, what I would do in the salon, and then I'm just gonna curl. So if you see me doing something that you have questions on, obviously chime in, but I feel like um, the salon curl has been done enough. Everyone has their own little you know, spin on it, but definitely not the point of today's live. I just need to get the curl in her hair so I can show you how to um, take photos of it. So what I typically do is vertical sections with the curl going back. Then when I get to about her ear, then I start flipping the curl. This piece goes forward. So back, 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 and then forward. And then from that over to the other ear, it's um, alternating forward, back, forward, back. And then when you get back to this side, again, back and away from her face. So let's get started. And then an, actually another tip that I'm obsessed with right now is the long barrel irons. Um, I could probably curl her hair in, no joke, five to 10 minutes, even if it was really extremely long, using utilizing the longer barrel. Um, but that's if I'm not talking, so let's see how this goes today time-wise. Okay, so like I said, vertical sections. This one I kind of bring forward a little bit, starting at the top of the hair. And then I always put my hand there just to kind of protect her face. And then leaving the ends out, and then we just leave it there to cool down. And then if you need to section some out of the way, you can, or you can just kind of piece through it as you go. Okay, so social media. Everybody either loves it or hates it, but I feel like for businesses, it's definitely a necessary <laughs> evil that we have to come to terms with. So for me personally, let's start with a little about me. Um, I work behind the chair. 
three days a week and I um, also own a salon, so prim and proper salon. I have 17 hairdressers there, two assistants and a receptionist. These are two completely different businesses. So my business behind the chair and me as Allison, a hairdresser is one business and the other business is the salon. And just like in real life, my social media pages reflect the two completely separate businesses. So as a hairdresser, so this goes for all you like renters out there, commission stylists, anything like that. Um, the most important piece of advice that I could give is that your social media page should reflect you and the clientele that you, or what you're going after. So you have to know your purpose, right? Like what is the purpose of this page? So if the purpose of the page is just to post whatever you want and to have fun, then you should have a personal page, right? Like you don't need a business page. That's just, just for you. But if you look at my Instagram page, Allie the Hair Slayer, I, um, my, the purpose of my specific page is, it says right there in the bio, tips and tricks for stylists and their clients. So with that, I am trying to work with brands. I love doing stuff like this. I love making videos at home, um, but working with brands and hair education and stuff like that, that is my personal goal. So behind the chair, so what you won't see on my page is me asking for new clients because I know this is kind of faux pas to say, but I don't want any new clients for me personally. Um, I work, like I said, those specific three days. I have one to two assistants and I do a client every hour to two or hour to hour and a half. If I was doing new clients all day long, there's no way I could book the way I do. So because I know my clients, I can get through the day faster. They've all been my clients for a very long time and I love them all. That's not to say I won't take a new client, I will but it's usually a referral. So because that's how I'm running my personal business, you will not see me, it would be pointless for me to be promoting uh, growing my clientele online because I would just be turning people away. What I do wanna grow is the clientele of my staff. So if I do get a recommendation or you know, somebody is wanting to come see me, it's easy for me to give them to one of my girls because obviously I have a lot of them at the salon and they're all amazing. So um, I think that's like one of the best parts about being a independent hairdresser is there's like so many ways to make an income on with your career. So depending on what it is that you're, you know, into what part of the business you like, there's lots of different avenues. So most of those are attainable through social media. So if you're trying to, you know, work with brands, um, your page is going to reflect that. If you're trying to work with, you know, like making hair videos, all of that kind of stuff. So if though you are a newer hairdresser or hairdresser that needs to build their business, then your page would look a little different. You'd be posting the type of clients and the type of hair that you want to do. So you're not gonna be posting vivids if you're wanting to do blonding. Um, you're also going to be making it look like, and I hope you actually do, love your job. Um, it's exciting to go to somebody who's excited about their job. Um, when Mike here starts talking about lighting or you know anything that anybody's interested, those are far more exciting things. I, I mean, I know nothing about it. I could actually care less. But when somebody is like really excited about it and really knowledgeable about it, like it's addicting. And that's who I would want to go to. Someone who I know at home is probably researching things like that. So that is definitely a piece of advice. I know as hairdressers, we share funny memes and you know all that kind of stuff about our wild lives behind the chair and how crazy clients could be but 
I personally just don't feel like some of that belongs on your page if you're trying to get new clients in your chair. So keep it upbeat, keep it lively, positive. Um, I think clients love like seeing a little bit about your lifestyle. So one tip would be to post on your wall your work and in your stories could be more like what you're doing outside of the salon. Um, because the more approachable you are, the more likely that people are gonna wanna come sit in your chair. So good things to post, like obviously good clean pictures of your work, um, which I'm gonna showcase at the end of this how I would photograph her hair after doing these salon curls. Um, so good clean pictures of your work, maybe a little bit of the salon, you know, that you're working at, <clears throat> so people know what kind of environment they would be walking into. Um, pricing, hours, expectations, you know, all that kind of stuff is really great, but really just keep it authentic and, um, you know, post things that you want to do and want to see. So I guess just to kind of like summarize that, if you're doing a page on your own, like a hair by so-and-so page or anything like that, just always remember who your target audience is and what you're trying to achieve from that page. Because like I said, if this was for fun, it would be your personal page, right? And you can mix a little of both, absolutely. Like I said, stories versus walls, versus the wall. Um, and then another like unutilized, I think like, or underutilized um, thing on Instagram right now is collaborations. So if I post a picture of my model here when her hair's all done and she's like, dang, like I look so good. Um, and there is a way on Instagram that you can invite her to be a collaborator. So if I do that and she has a million and one followers, now her, <laughs> are you laughing at me? <laughs> now her people are gonna find me and they're gonna be like, dang, she does good hair. I need tips and tricks. And my people are gonna find her and be like, ooh, a brand might reach out to her for extension videos or a brush or they want her to wear a certain top. You know what I mean? So like what happens is you say, she accepts my collaboration because um, she likes the photo, she likes the caption, all of that kind of stuff. And it instantly goes on both of our walls. So it's easy, accessible. So both of our people can kind of merge together. Um, I use this a lot at the salon, definitely with brands. You know, this is like the new way. Um, now you're not always gonna get your collaboration request accepted. And to be honest, a lot of people are doing their social media posts like months in advance. So don't get your, you know, discouraged if you go <laughs> tag a brand. They're not necessarily going to post it because your caption might be like, my caption for our picture today might be like, behind the scenes, well, who cares about that? It, you know, it's not like actually telling what I'm doing. So, but it will draw attention to your post to get more views, um, which in turn, you know, leads to more clients. Whew! Any questions? Nothing yet? Glad you came up for air. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I like this subject. Okay. So I'm, like I said, I'm working through her hair. Okay, so that's my one business, right? Is my personal hair brand. So the other one is the salon. So this page, like over time, has gotten way easier for me to manage. Um, I actually don't even do it myself anymore. Um, I have figured out a way to utilize people that are already on payroll to simply be able to repost and do things on the page. So there is a lot of salon pages out there that are way more aesthetically pleasing and all of that kind of stuff like um, than what my prim and proper salon page is. But I have to tell you, our page is very successful for what I need it to be, which is for clients to be able to see what we do at the salon, see what products we use, and also which hairdresser they wanna to go to. So how do I do that? Um, 
my receptionist. She is in charge of the stories. So all of my stylists know that if they post a story and they tag <clears throat> the salon in it, the salon, as long as it fits, you know, our brand, the salon will repost their work and then we clearly tag the hairdresser underneath it. So if let's just say Rosanna at my salon posts a beautiful picture in her story, she tags prim and proper, Michelle gets all of the notifications for that and at least once a day she reposts it to the page with Rosanna's tag right underneath it. So if a client sees that, she's like, ooh, that's the kind of hair I want, then she can go on the page and all of the like little highlight bubbles have the stylist name in it and all of their work from the stories goes in that page. So you could probably go through 50 pictures of Rosanna's work you know, throughout the year to see if she's like a good fit for you. Plus all of her information is there so she's easy to you know, book with. So that's what the receptionist does. She also handles any like new clients that are messaging to come in, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, for our commission stylists, the ones that are building, Michelle will, um, my receptionist, she will answer and um, any inquiries and also like if they have openings, she'll post what openings they have. So we don't have to do, I mean, I've been open almost 10 years now. Most of my girls are um, booked and busy. I have a couple new and growing. And, but when I first started, we did need to bring more clients to the salon. So one tip I would say is you can do the sponsored post, which I used to do back in the day. And I would spend like $20 to sponsor a post, but I would make sure that the demographics were really right on to what I wanted for my business, which Instagram will let you do all of that. And then, um, but the key to this is, there's a lot of hairdressers out there, you know, posting their work and all of that kind of stuff. But the key thing that worked for me was putting right on the ad how much that service runs, which people get real scared of that. But as long as you're, consultation with the client is good, then that price doesn't really matter. The thing is, is that you just, a client doesn't know, especially you have a really good Instagram page, a client doesn't know if you charge $100 or $800 for the service. So if your page looks really good and they don't want to spend $800, they're not going to message you. So what we used to do was like balayage special and we would post a picture of beautiful balayage and we would put let's just say two hundred dollars so when the client comes in if they're like oh i want to add a cut i also want to do a conditioning treatment or whatever then the price goes up from there but for two hundred dollars they could get whatever look was posted and i'm not kidding we would post that and then the phone would ring off the hook so it really does work people really do want to know and i don't even care if your price is 400 you know it's not about the discount it's just about price like transparency, transparency, I would say. So we, we used to do a lot of that. Like I said, I'm lucky right now, mostly everybody's um, busy. So yeah, so I think the biggest thing with like business is knowing what your business is and what you're after. Otherwise you're just spinning your wheels because it doesn't really matter how many followers or likes or comments you get. It's finding the right clients to find you and wanna come in for the service. So, okay, I'm almost done curling her hair. Those were my little tips about the business side of Instagram. Oh, and then another thing is, like I was saying, I have the other girl that posts on Prim and Proper's page. She will, on the wall, repost my stylist's work, and then she makes the funny reels. So she's real young and inspired, and she comes up with all lots of fun stuff, and we all just kind of, you know, go along with it. Also, tips and how we use products. So that's basically what goes into that page. So yeah, I oversee it, but I almost never even have to touch it anymore, which is good because my time is better spent elsewhere. How long does it take to you, to, for you to get to that point where you could you know, take a step back? I mean, I feel like even before I had the receptionist and all that, I also had, um, always, I've always worked with an assistant. So. 
I don't know, stuff that I don't want to do, it's easy to just train somebody else. And it's not that I don't want to do it. It's just, if you're trying, if you're in my salon and you're trying to build a business, you should do that. You know, if you're trying to rent inside of my space, like I want to make it as accessible for everybody, you know? So I would say a couple years. I mean, I've definitely stepped back more recently because I'm concentrating on, you know, you kind of just, when you're a business owner, you put the energy towards what needs the work, right? So that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so her hair is all curled. Um, like I said, this is exactly what we would do in the salon. And you could see in the back. Now we're never gonna leave her curls like this, but let's just talk about it for a minute. So um, we're gonna actually go over to the photo. So we're here at obviously Unite TV, so there's like a whole photo set set up which you would not have that in the salon um but every salon has like their photo area so for us right now we're doing a lot of like in the doorway type pictures the light comes in from the outside and the pictures turn out lovely there um i'm going to be perfectly honest i really don't love taking photos because i'm not that good at it like <laughs> um my lens is always dirty i'm running a million miles an hour um, I'll be standing next to Francisco here taking pictures and his looks amazing and I'm literally right next to him and mine looks like not like that not amazing so um, but I do again my assistant I trained her really good to take pictures so I sent her the front and she takes pictures and if there's something specific I want to get then I'll come over so I think knowing your strengths is a really you know good thing like know what you're good at and you know delegate the rest so Okay, so if I'm doing tousled, beachy type waves, then I'm gonna go in with Texturiza for the um, pictures. But Texturiza sometimes can have like a frizzy sort of appearance on hair in photos, not in real life. So um, then you would go in with your second day and I'll show you when we go over there and you would smooth out any of those flyaways. If I'm doing one of those flat wave photos where it's like really smooth and you see like the waves coming in and it's really shiny, then it's glossing spray or La Play. So just like Instagram for business, Instagram for photography is the same thing. You have to kind of know your end result before you start just putting a whole bunch of products on. But for me, one of the best parts about Unite is that you can like stack the products. So if I am doing a glossing spray, it's completely weightless. It's gonna be like humidity risk resistant for her. And then if I need to shoot it with hairspray afterwards, then I you know, totally can. So for demo purposes, I'm gonna leave her like this and we are gonna go for a walk. Yeah. I'll follow you. Okay. <laughs> beachy waves on her first and then I'm going to smooth it out afterwards so a tip about um, glossing sprays it also can break product down so if you get too strong of a hairspray or anything like that you could spray it on and it kind of releases some of the hold of the product okay so oops I forgot my other brush and just for demo purposes, so you can kind of see our setup, we're going to pre basically pretend that this is your window source um, at your salon, and then that backlight will probably come off considering you're talking about flyways being shown, and any backlight on hair will show more flyways than you want. See, I told you he's obsessed with lighting and photography, <laughs> and I know nothing about it. But I wish I had a setup like this in the salon. That would be great. Okay, so these are some good tools uh, for combing out curls. Um, some sort of, I mean, I'm obsessed with this brush now, but any sort of wet brush is great to 
comb out the curls or a wide tooth comb or even a finer comb if you're really having trouble releasing the curl. So um, because you put all that product in to prep before we started, you can brush away and not be afraid of it falling down. So I think that's kind of sometimes where people go like astray is because they, you know, think it's, they don't comb enough. Okay, so you're gonna take face back there. And then I always have them tip back. Now, I don't do her color, um, but it's like amazing, perfection. So who does your hair? Um, her name is Riley Hunter. Right. She's in, based in San Diego. There you go, Riley Hunter, <laughs> good job. Um, so even though, like everything is content, right? Like they say. So even though I would never want to post with curls not combed out, you can see all of her like color variation and all of that kind of stuff going through her hair. So there is a way to like be more artsy with your photographs and kind of really get in there. So what are you doing? Mr. Gary Baker in the house, just I'm, to make I'm, us all uh, nervous. I'm quality control, everybody. <laughs> so I've come in just to make sure everything's running smoothly. How many do it so far? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's passable. There's a few pointers here and there, but um, yeah, we'll keep going. I'll be outside keeping monitor, monitoring the situation. <laughs> Okay, back to it. So I'm going with the texture as a spray. You can see visually that um, it's got dry shampoo, hairspray, and spray wax in one. So that airflow is gonna really like, you know, piece apart the hair to give you that to hold. She's gonna tip her hair back, and then I'm just combing out the curls. But see, nothing is going anywhere. Like the bounce is still there. It's still super pretty. She's got lots of volume. And like I said, her color is fantastic. So this just makes my job really easy. So I think she's done this before. So she already knows. But one of the tricks is like you're tipping the head back. So you can, I mean, I haven't even put any product on there and it already looks great. Okay. So I'm going to go up and underneath with the texture as a spray because I really want to volumize her look. You can turn around and face me. Can you see if your head forward? So one thing I like about this product is that it does have the dry shampoo in it. So if there is any areas that are a little bit oily or like a preventive thing, it definitely helps um, I'm gonna give this to you. Break up the, <laughs> any of the oil at the root. So the point of this now is to show the difference between the products, right? So this is gonna be more the textured one. So now you can go in with your wide tooth comb and you could just kind of give yourself like a little volume at the top if you want. So taking the section and just kind of I mean, and with that product in there, I mean, I've seen people that even post like, like that texture up at the top. So with all of this lighting, you would probably be totally fine to photograph like this, you know, but in a salon setting, some of this would be a little too frizzy kind of looking. So is that, did I get you? No, I feel like something in my eye. <laughs> Okay, so anywhere that has too many flyaways, I'll take that back from you, is when you would go in with the second day. So just one piece of advice, if you go to open second day and it looks like the Sahara Desert in there, not like this, it's because you threw this away. You've got to keep this on there to keep it fresh inside. And I've tried it and it's tried and true. If I throw this away, it's Sahara Desert. I can't even use it. If I leave that on, it stays fresh. So really, really good tip. Okay, so then you're just gonna take a little bit. I use my fingernails so that it's not like a huge mess. I rub it all the way into my hands. And then anywhere that I feel, especially if I want the ends a little straighter, 
But anywhere that I feel needs a little bit of smoothing out, I'll do that. Okay, and then if I was gonna photograph her right now, here's some little tips. One pose that we do is um, she's gonna lift her hands up and put them behind your head like that. And then, yep. So this is a good one. Um, and then if she tips her head back a little bit more, you can see all the color, you can see all the texture in her hair. Um, yep, she can move her fingers and you can take a video, you know, like that. Um, also, I think you can put your head normal. Again, if I was posting this more to show the color variation, you can get, you know, fun accessories and without messing up her style for the day, it doesn't even have to look good from the front. It's just whatever picture you're taking at the time. So, you know. I could stick that, you know, something like that. This is probably not gonna go well for me. Turn your head this way. But then you could see how her blonde is real lived in. And it gives it like a little, you know, kind of variation. Or you can just take a little fun hair clip and whatever's in your way, you know, like from showing the color, you could just go like that. And obviously the picture would be zoomed in right there. So then you would see more of the color variation like that. But people don't want to just see the backs of heads anymore. So my tip here is that like literally not everybody wants to get their photograph taken every single time, time they come to the salon. So the tip is call your client beforehand and say, hey, I'm going to take some pictures. Is that cool? If they tell you no right then, no problem. But at least they're like prepared because most people will come in jammies or whatever otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. um, most people are excited about it. Like you'd be surprised if given notice, they're happy to take pictures. If I spring it on someone like on the spot there, um, I'll tell them, babe, I'm not going to post you if you don't look good. It'll only be a corner of your face. You know, like, I'll show you the pictures first. There's ways you can make people feel comfortable. Um, so one way is you can turn the model's head that way. And you can literally bring almost all of their hair forward. And even though she's not shy to take pictures, like, you can see her face is barely in it, right? So the angle could be here if I wanted her face in it. I could come here, you know, I could have her turn a little bit more like this, even from the front. You just have to pay attention to the eyes because like she knows how to do her eyes, but people don't. And then you'll get this picture where they're like, you know, like looking at you all weird. So. Um, yeah, just some posing things, you know, like she could turn sideways, you know, arms back. Yeah, show us. Pose, babe. <laughs> she knows the drill. Yeah, see, there's like a hundred. So then you just have a move and you take a video and that's totally all salon hair vibes for sure. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's smooth it out and show the other look. Okay, so turn around for me. So it really depends on what you're trying to focus on, right? If you wanted to show color or texture, maybe this angle would be best suited for that. But, you know, if you have somebody that's camera shy, you kind of have no options, right? Yeah. So I just think, in general, a whole wall full of the back of people's head is not really it anymore. So you have to be creative in, like, how you're photographing them. Um, I also used to try letting people leave and send me selfies or whatever, but it never ever worked out um, they would forget or I get some like really filtered kind of picture you know and um, they don't know your brand and what you're looking for but um, on a page where I was trying to okay so on a page where I'm trying to build my clientele then all those poses that I just said work great if I was trying to work with a brand I'd be legit holding the brush like this <laughs> like by this brush right but it's not obnoxious. It's like, it's in there because why would this brand want to post this picture? Just, it's, there's no proof in it. So um, yeah, you have to know why you're posting what picture. So, and clients want to see you. So if you're comfortable being in it, you know, have someone else take the shot. 
this is one thing that Mike's taught me over the years. Um, just like knowing where the brand is, especially at Fashion Week, if you see Mike walk by, you know, you should be ready. <laughs> like, huh, can you see it? Can you see it? You know, because this is advertising for you too, for the brand and for me as a stylist. So yeah, turn the nozzle where it's, you know, this does nobody any good. So, I mean, some of this is like common sense, but you'd be surprised. Um, and it's not me. always even going to work out, right? It doesn't like, always work out. Right now, you just essentially have to be on the other side with what? it facing out. Why is that? Because once you put your hand around the spray, you're going to cover the... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> totally natural, right? I look totally natural. Yes. So it really, so, all, you know, yeah. that, right. that is one of those things where, yeah, we always try and get it, but when you guys are, especially at Fashion Week, you're in it and you are focused on the hair, so... So, okay, so the idea of this is a dry shine, right? So we're not going to do the same thing and lift it up and make it all messy. We're going to leave her curls flat like we want them, and we're going to just coat the product on top of the hair, shake as you go, and then use the bottle, not your fingers, to kind of, I mean, can you see that? I don't know if it translates, but it's like super yeah. shiny. Don't inhale it. Tastes great, too. Um, make sure we get there. And then smooth that out. Yeah, so I think it's just being very deliberate. So I curled her hair to have beach waves, right? Um, which was the alternating the piece back and forth. If you wanted this all to go together like this shape, this shape is like this because we did not alternate the curl. It all went back. So on beach waves, we don't want it to all curl together. That's why we alternate. Yeah. So then this, you know, your props might be a little different. Like, using the same one, but maybe I want to just like, you know, kind of pull the hair together so you see the shine. And when you're looking from far away, it's one thing, but like these are the kind of shots that you get like right in there, right? So then you can see whatever. And then if she wants to turn forward, Like I said, you could totally, if she was okay being in pictures, I mean, that's like that perfect kind of flat wave. And that would be, you know, she could turn sideways, yeah. But you can see the shine on that, and it's not like an oily shine, it's just it's reflecting the light. And more direct light will show that better versus an indirect light, so. Yeah, Get, totally getting out into the uh, sun will show your shine better. Show your shine. <laughs> yeah, so that's my tips for pictures. The girls at the salon, um, we have like five poses that we do most all the time. Most of the girls or most of the clients already know like what to do and what the drill is. And then I always just take a quick video of them moving or whatever. Sometimes those are my favorite because I can slice it together with something else and actually it really shows personality. Like if I tell her just to smile, it's cute, right? But if I'm like, just be yourself, we're gonna record. Like sometimes they go wild and you get something like a kiss blown or a peace sign or you know something like way more exciting. So, okay, I talked through that whole thing. You did great, um, excellent tips. No questions? No, we're everybody good. was just soaking it up. <laughs> okay, so we are going to end this because let's go back over here so I can tell what's next. Okay, so we're gonna do a bunch of videos, so we're gonna end this now. The next live is a question and answer with Gary. It is all about Runway Ready. Uh, it's on Monday, May 20th at 10 a.m. And um, yeah, and just like always, all our lives are recorded, so you can find them on Unite TV, under the live replay, follow us on Instagram, tell your friends, like, yeah, that's it. Have a good Monday.